Okay guys, this time we'll see how we can use systemd inside of WSL of Windows 11 in order to use um, micro KTS, a Kubernetes distribution, as well as Postman. Systemd is uh, quite useful for also uh, dealing with our uh, services. In order to have uh, full support of snaps, you need to have uh, a special version of uh, WSL. So if we go to command prompt and uh, we type WSL minus minus version, I will see that it's 0 0.67. So anything above this can work. You have several ways of installing it. One is if you have a development uh, a version of Windows. The other is uh, through a GitHub repo where you have the releases of uh, Microsoft WSL. So you need to download uh, this version and afterwards with the uh, add appx package you can uh, install the, uh, the, the package. Also when entering inside of the WSL in the configuration you need to specify that uh, we need to boot using uh, systemd and afterwards I recommend just restarting your computer I have uh, here everything ready, so if I go to WSL, I can type, uh, let's say, sudo system control status, and uh, this will give me all the services running here. I can also type uh, sudo snap list, and we see the installed uh, snaps on the system. Okay, so let's try now to install microKTS, so I'll type sudo snap install uh, micro k8s and uh, from the classic channel and this will download and install the snap version of micro k8s for us okay it's installed so we can type micro k8s start we would like to add our user into micro k8s group as well as to have permissions over the that cube configuration file and let's uh, start it. Of course, we need to apply the changes by changing into the micro KTS group. So type new group micro KTS. Okay, we can see the status. And those are the add ons uh, right now. Also, we can type micro KTS kubectl get all in all namespaces. And this will show us what we have running right now. So the main Kubernetes core service. From here, we can actually try everything that Kubernetes has to offer us. And this is done via a snap. So if I type snap list, we see that we have micro KTS installed. I can actually stop it for now. And the next thing is to try to install pod one. Okay, as for podman, it can be installed using sudo snap install podman with dev mode. I have it already installed, but uh, since it's quite new, uh, it doesn't want to start here on this machine. Of course, uh, we can try the traditional way with uh, apt install podman. And uh, after this, we'll see it uh, running. It needs to download all its files and uh, configure them. Now, if I type podman uh, ps, uh, we should see that it should work. All right, uh, and actually we can run the command just to test whether podman will create a container uh, from Docker IO library HTTPD and then redirect it to our port 80 in order for us to browse it. It will also detach the command prompt uh, so our console will be now uh, free, we can type podman ps and you can see that the container is here and we can try browsing it by going to port 8080 and we see it works and after some patching let's say that uh, we've managed to run without uh, the sudo command so we can uh, run the container, start it, and the pod also using just podman. Here we just raised the user IDs and group IDs uh, used by the current user. For sure this can be fixed uh, in the next version uh, of podman. 
and uh, that's how you can use it in order uh, to create uh, uh, containers and pods one more thing is how we can uh, browse through extended for uh, file systems or systems formatted with uh, linux from our windows distribution so once we have uh, wsl installed uh, we can go into powershell and uh, now from here uh, we can run this command so basically we are selecting all the devices that we have and uh, we see that we have one external device with uh, its descriptor here physical uh, drive one then in command prompt uh, we can actually mount it using the following command wsl mount and then the name of the physical device and which partition we would like to mount here we have two partitions we would like to browse the first partition and uh, we need uh, administrator privileges so we'll open a terminal with administrative privileges and now again we'll repeat the same command and now it says that it has been mounted if we go from our command prompt into here linux and then the distribution and then to the mount directory wsl we should be able to see the contents inside of the physical drive 1p1 and that's our external usb um, drive and we can of course uh, browse the files um, delete copy and do whatever we would like uh, with them uh, natively without resorting to external uh, programs all right guys that's for now i hope you enjoyed the presented updates to wsl that aim to make your experience with linux under windows uh, way more uh, smoother if you have enjoyed the content you can subscribe to the channel Thank you.